Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Kodak and Huron Research Institute have ranked India's top 100 wealthiest women in the country. Shireen Mohan is standing by with the findings of that report. Shireen, take it away. Well, India is creating wealth at a furious pace and women are starting to bridge the gap with men. This is the finding of a report released by Kotak and Huran Research Institute, which has ranked India's top 100 wealthiest women in the country. Leading the list is Smita V. Krishna of the Godridge Group, a member of the board of Godridge. She has a net worth of over 37,500 crore rupees. That's right at the top. At number two is HCL's Roshni Nadar with a net worth of over 30,000 crore rupees. And Indu Jain of the Bennett Coleman Group comes in at number Number three, Kiran Shaw of Biocon, Kiran Nadar of HCL complete the top five. At number six, we've got Lina Tiwari of the USV Group. She is also an MLA in Uttar Pradesh representing the Apna Dal. Now, 22% of India's top 100 wealthy women come in from the pharma sector. 12% are from the software and services space. Food and beverages, chemicals and automobiles are also among the top sectors where women have managed to create wealth. When it comes to companies, Infosys and Avenue Supermart have produced 10 out of India's 100 richest women. Intas Pharma, Asian Paints, Microlabs complete the list of top five companies. Geographically, Delhi and Mumbai are home to 50% of the top 100 richest women in the country, followed by Bengaluru, Ahmedabad and Hyderabad. Joining us now uh, to take us through the findings, uh, Jaydeep from Kotak and Anas from Huron. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here uh, on the show. Let me start by asking you about the omissions and why we've actually seen those omissions. I know that you've put in a lot of work into this report, Jaydeep, but, you know, we don't have politicians, we don't have sports stars, we don't have Bollywood representation. Uh, it's largely corporate, both listed as well as unlisted entities that find themselves, or women that find themselves in... I think I will take that question. Uh, when we value the uh, net worth of individuals in the report, uh, we only go by verifiable data uh, that is uh, that is valid. So we might have missed a few on a few individuals. What I normally say is, for every one person who we identified, we probably miss another uh, uh, another one. So the actual list, the size of the list, should be probably 200 or 300. Uh, but uh, what we are trying to do here is to talk about some of the most successful uh, uh, the stories of uh, companies that have a significant ownership by women. You know, what I always say is you know, creating wealth is fantastic, but when it's created transparently, it uh, gives a lot of respect. So uh, we've tried to create an inaugural list. Maybe next year we would expand it and possibly look at more such uh, 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 companies or entrepreneurs who we've missed. But this is the inaugural list and this is the, uh, okay. we looked at verifiable data that is uh, valid legally. Uh, understood. So let me then ask you, uh, you know, what is the gap that you're seeing between uh, women who have inherited wealth on account of being part of the promoter family, etc., and self-made women? So women entrepreneurs, what's the gap in this list today? And where do you see that headed over the next few years? I think when we started the uh, uh, <coughs> India Rich List, uh, um, as you rightly mentioned, when you... Uh, open the conversation. When we started the India Rich List about five years back, we could only find four women in the India Rich List, you know, put self-made and inherited, put together, uh, from uh, possibly one self-made and three inherited. But from there, we've expanded to um, uh, possibly 100 to 120, uh, which would be in the latest list that we'll put out in a, uh, uh, India Rich List that we'll put out in, uh, uh, in a month's time or a couple of months' time. Uh, so, number of self-made entrepreneurs in India has drastically increased. If I have to put a percentage, it will be probably a few thousands of percentage from an Indian rich list uh, perspective. Uh, uh, but, uh, so, self-made entrepreneurs have gone drastically. And, uh, of course, India still are in uh, very similar to possibly uh, one comparable economy like China, which is about 10, 15 years back, wherein women are uh, inheriting businesses but getting actively involved as well. Uh, there is a significant gap right now, but this gap is bound to reduce as more and more uh, women uh, get into entrepreneurship, as more and more uh, 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 you know, women possibly uh, start raising funds, take the company to uh, the next level in terms of value creation. So that's all bound to happen. So the gap is definitely reducing, though. 
Okay. Uh, In fact, I'd like to add one more thing. Yeah, go ahead, Jadeep. Yeah, uh, the thing which I would like to add is that uh, uh, yes, there would be uh, women who might have inherited the wealth, uh, but there is a significant portion of that which are now taking the company to different levels. Uh, so I would not, uh, yes, of course, uh, there would be a clear cut differentiation between uh, people who've uh, uh, inherited and people who've uh, started uh, the, the, the uh, organizations of the firms, but I think ladies who've inherited the, the wealth and have now taken it to different levels. And I see that uh, uh, growing significantly in the next few years as well. Okay, I see somebody like Indira Nui on the list as well. Uh, uh, and, and that would uh, be because in your report you identify Indians or define them only as Indians who've been born or brought up in India, right? So that's why somebody like an Indira Nui makes it to this list. That's correct. Okay. Uh, you know, we were, yes. talking, we were talking about the India-China comparison as well. Uh, what's the picture like as far as China is concerned today? And we were talking about the gap uh, in India between inherited wealth uh, as well as uh, women entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, what's the comparison if you, if you make that comparison with China today? Um, I will probably add on a couple of more statistics uh, than just talking about inherited and self-made because that story is going to uh, change anyway uh, for sure. In, from a China rich list uh, perspective, 70% of the list is self-made uh, and the number two is the average wealth uh, per an individual in the China rich list vis-a-vis -vis India rich list. In the China rich list, the average wealth of a women individual in the rich list is around 6,500 crores. In India, it's around uh, 4,000 uh, crores, right? So there's a difference there. Um, uh, then the next thing is on the geographical spread. If you look at the uh, uh, India rich list or the possibly the women representation in the list, it's very concentrated on few cities. Uh, but in a country like China, it's very well spread out. So that is quite interesting. In fact, the, the richest women individual in China is not from Beijing or Shanghai, it's from Guangzhou. No, it's like saying it's not from Mumbai or Delhi, it's from you know, Hyderabad or Bangalore.